Thanks for tuning in. Join me today as I take you through the repair, restoration, and testing of my TX x 1000 r reel-to-reel tape deck. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment, you've come to the right spot. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell, as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. There is a risk of serious injury or death from electrical shock working on this equipment. If you're not comfortable with working on the equipment, please do not take the cover off and consult a professional. First, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the TAC X1000R. It's a bi-directional open reel tape deck. It uses either 7 inch or 10 and a half inch reels, has a built-in DBX noise reduction system. It operates at 3 and 3 quarter inches per second or 7 and a half inches per second. This TAC X1000R, it's in pretty good cosmetic condition, if not perfect. I've removed the chassis from the case, and I'll look it over to see if there's anything obviously wrong before powering it up. That's always a good idea. You don't know what may have been, if you're not familiar with the unit, it's always a good idea to just take an eyeball and, and uh, see what you got. I found just by looking that the uh, capstan belt needed to be replaced as uh, it didn't have one. It probably broke years ago or melted away or what have you and uh, got to get a capstan belt on there so went ahead uh, replaced that as you always should in almost any uh, vintage tape deck whether it's reel to reel or cassette. Rubber belts are rubber belts and most of the times you know these units haven't been um, serviced in a long time so it's almost uh, something you've always got to do in a tape deck whether like I said whether it's reel to reel or a uh, cassette. Now in addition to new belts many times the best thing to do is really just to remove everything in the tape path and, and clean and lubricate it. Once again you're gonna find usually and like in this unit's case it's you know close to 40 years old and um, almost for sure it's never been uh, tore apart now, since it was put together in Japan. With everything out of the way, the capstan motor, with that removed, you're able to clean the uh, pulley where the capstan belt runs quite easily. You know, it's easy to get at and you can really clean it up and make it just about like new. Same thing again, you're going to find a bunch of 40-year-old uh, grease. It doesn't matter if it's in a tape deck or your car. If it's grease and it's 40 years old, it's probably time to get in there and uh, clean out the old grease and replace it with some new. You're going to find that all, again, tape decks, you know, whether it's a cassette or a reel-to-reel -reel like this one, it has many small washers, just many small parts in general. If you're not familiar with these things, you start unscrewing something and then, you know, you can easily you lose a washer, a spacer, a part you didn't even know you had. Some of them are nylon, you can hardly see them. So you should always be careful when you're undoing anything and also you should have the service manual available. Now that way if something does fall apart, you might have a chance of getting it back together because they ha they'll have illustrations in there most of the time of uh, how to get how to get something back together again. You know, when you take it apart, put things in a manner that makes sense to you so you can get it back together. There's no right, there's no wrong. Taking pictures, it's laying stuff out in a way that you can look at it and say, well, I kind of know how this goes back together. Throw them all in a bowl. If you work on these things all the time, you can probably do that. If you don't, you're just better off to lay them out and in some manner that makes sense to you. So when you go to put it back together, uh, you can. A few tips work great in tight in tight spaces rags paper towels for larger areas there's always a lot of cleaning involved with with any audio restoration you'll need a variety of basic tools to work on this x uh, 1000 R. You know, Allen wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, just to be able to remove the uh, various uh, fasteners. I think it's best to work on one assembly at a time. You know, you take one apart, you do the necessary cleaning, lubrication, and you put it back together before moving on. So again, you don't have 50 little pieces sitting on your table, and when it comes to put it back together, you're like, Psh, I'm just not sure where it all goes. And Believe it or not, especially in tape decks, one of these little washers 
make the, all the difference in the world from it working correctly or not. Each of these pieces really are important in a in, in a reel to reel or a cassette deck also. Good thing to do too, and you learn this, guess how I learned it. When you're working on something, you're not familiar with it, and you're gonna take something apart, put a piece of paper, a paper towel, something, underneath what you're taking off because you think well i'm just going to take a screw out and i'll just pull this thing out and you take the screw out and all of a sudden something falls and again as i said in these tape decks something might fall and you don't even know you don't even know it fell if you're not familiar with them so it's always good to put something underneath where you're working that way if it falls you can get it off the piece of paper or the paper towel and you're not wondering where it went tipping the chassis upside down trying to shake out pieces and i have done that before so trying to avoid if you take it on trying to avoid you having to do that again a service manual for the TX 1000 hours a must before disassembling it. I mean, it'll show you how to get the thing apart and back together, at least to some extent. A lot better than having nothing. After taking the, the tape path apart and cleaning things up, go ahead and I'll clean the heads, the tape guides, the pinch roller, everything that's in the, in, in the tape path again. A lot of times, let's do the basics and the decks will work. Not always. I mean, you know, there's there's plenty of issues with these that involve something other than cleaning, but a good part of the time, you just get the thing cleaned up the way it's supposed to be. You've got a decent chance that it'll work. I use a uh, calibration tape. It's, it's an MRL calibration tape. I mean, they're pretty much the standard today. Back years ago, you were servicing TX, TAC, the company, made calibration tapes, of course, for their equipment. Well, there's no more TAC tapes, just like there's no more TAC parts, <laughs> practically, anyway. And so, MRLs is the standard today to use to calibrate, you know, any type of a vintage tape deck, reel-to-reel -reel deck, anyway. The adjustment pots in the TX-X1000R are not the easiest to reach. Some of them are kind of buried in there. You can get at them. I mean, there's no doubt you can get to them. But again, if if you're not used to doing this, you're going to say, holy smokes, how do you get in there? And sometimes you just got to stick your finger in, move some wires out of the way, maybe cut a tie wrap, whatever. You can get to them. It's just... Once again, it's not the easiest deck to uh, get to the calibration pots. Uh, I think I mentioned a couple other times about the service manual. Well, the service manual will also give you all the information you need to adjust the tape deck correctly. It'll have all the information. Are the, are the service manuals 100% right? No, but most of them are 99% right, and you'd never be able to even attempt to repair or calibrate or set up without the service manual. You've got to know, you know, what pot to turn and when and why. I use a signal generator and a scope along with a woe and flutter meter to do basic calibration so to get it close. Then give it a shot for some final measurements. I mean that should get you pretty much where you need to be. I, I use a, another vintage piece of uh, test equipment for reel-to-reel -reel and cassette deck testing. I use a, a Sound Technology uh, 1510A, and it's a vintage piece of equipment itself uh, from the 1980s. To do any type of tape deck measurements and calibrations, um, it it's really a great piece of equipment. It'll measure just about everything that you see at the back of the uh, of your um, of your owner's manuals where they have the specifications for a tape deck. This deck ended up testing very, very well. You know, I really didn't have any any changes. I mean, as far as uh, calibrating it, um, I really didn't have to do much in the way of calibration. But you still got to check it. I'll do a little bit of a uh, little bit of basic recording here on the test bench. Uh, do a little bit of uh, recording, a little playback. Just generally check out the controls uh, for put the case back on it and uh, call it uh, call it complete. Got the uh, TAC uh, X1000R up and running. Do some testing, do some recording. Um, make sure it'll fast forward and rewind and uh, do its auto reverse thing and just generally uh, put it into a stereo system and see what it'll do. Went through uh, bench testing, it was fine. Real test is to 
hook it up and let's see what it sounds like. All right, we're going to try some of the features uh, of this uh, TX one thousand R. You know, it's got search to queue, search to zero. It was just right in the beginning of the era of the computer controlled stuff. So um, we'll just call this point here. Uh, where are we at? Like seven minutes, 30 seconds or change. I'll hit the Q button and it'll just keep playing normally. I don't know if you can see it here or not, but next to the Q, there's a button called uh, search to Q, uh, STC. And if we push that, the deck will automatically rewind to that um, point and stop or if we hit that and then right after that hit the play button when it gets back there it'll play uh, we haven't gone too far yet so we'll let it keep going but um, this deck has a lot of uh, a lot of features um, it's a pretty reliable deck unlike the X2000 series which is a little newer but maybe, like so many things, was not built maybe quite as well. This deck is a very good chance, you know, once you get it set up right, it'll, it'll run for a long time like that. It's not really too flaky as long as something doesn't happen to it that's unusual. They'll usually run very reliably and you'll get at least many hundreds of hours out of a refurbished one, if, if, if not even more than that. I think we've gone far enough just to show what happens here. I'm going to stop it. You don't have to do this. You know, I do. I'm not real crazy about going between modes. You know, uh, fast forward, reverse, play, back, forth. Even though something the deck allows you to do, eh, being almost 40 years old, give it a break. So now we're going to go search to queue. But what I will do, seeing it stops at the queue, I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button too. Now we didn't go very far, so the thing barely got started rewinding before it's gotten back to its spot. But anyway, it worked. Um, and you got to search to zero too, so I think now what I'm going to do is just uh, do a little bit of listening and uh, see how it sounds. And it ought to go into uh, reverse play here. We're still in forward play. Uh, we ought to get into reverse play here at any moment. Boy, not much tape left. You better hurry up. We're waiting for reverse. Reverse, reverse. Reverse. Reverse, anyone? Ought to be going into reverse play here in a second. There we go. She's going to go into reverse play, yeah, and she went. And now you can see the reels are uh, going the other way. And it looks like we got some music, too. Uh, that's good. If you ever come upon a TAC X1000R, don't hesitate to get it. It's a really wonderful open reel deck, but like all tape decks, they're all broke. It doesn't matter if it's a TAC, a Nakamichi, an Akai, a Sony, a Yamaha, you name it. Any 40, 50 year old tape deck is going to have issues. So the main thing probably is find one that satisfies you cosmetically because they're all going to need work to work properly or you're not going to be very happy with it. You're going to say like some people do, well they sound terrible. Uh, no they don't. Uh, properly working open reel deck be very difficult to tell the difference between the source and the recording you made on a deck like the X1000R. They're that good. I hope that you enjoyed my TAC X1000R tape deck repair, restoration, and testing video. If you did, please leave me a big thumbs up down below. If you're a non-subscriber and you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And for my present subscribers, as always, thank you so much. Y'all have a good day.